This is Session 3, Customizing Workspaces. A workspace is a specific layout of panels to enable a particular editing function, such as editing or mixing. Workspaces and panels can be added, moved, removed, resized, <laughs> and saved as needed at any time. Workspaces can support dual computer monitor systems, though this training displays everything within a single screen. While Premiere Pro ships with six standard workspaces, each one of them can be customized as well. There's no limit to the number of additional workspaces that you can create. So let me show you how to change workspaces, move panels within a workspace, add and delete a panel, change the size of panels, customize and save a workspace, and reset a workspace back to its default settings. As we learned in the last movie, this is the default workspace called the Editing Workspace. There's actually six to choose from, and they're all accessed from the Window menu. Go up to Window, Workspace. Audio is designed for audio mixing and audio editing. Color correction shows scopes, allows us to color correct clips. Editing is the one we're looking at now. If you don't like the new 2-up look in CS6, you can go back to the CS5.5 workspace called Editing CS5.5. Effects allows us to view and control effects more easily, and metalogging is used for keeping track of metadata associated with clips and with sequences. Well, let's stay with the editing one. And notice that we have all these panels. They're indicated by tabs, but the tab actually refers to all the information that's associated with that tab. A tab, you click on it, the gold box indicates that that tab is now active. Oh cool thing, watch this, press the tilde key. The tilde key, that's the accent key immediately above the tab key on the extreme left side of the keyboard, blows a particular panel full screen. Now, there's two choices here. One, if your cursor is in it, let's do media browser, but it's not selected. Notice the media browser doesn't have a gold box, but my cursor is in it. When you press tilde, it blows whichever window your cursor is in, full screen, and then tilde again takes it back. If it is selected, shift tilde takes whichever the selected window is and blows it up full screen. I love this ability to, to expand something to fill the screen and then with a single keyboard shortcut bring it right back down again. Again, tilde by itself highlights whichever panel your cursor is in. And shift tilde zooms whichever one has got the gold box around. It's called Selected. Okay, so let's say we want to add something. What can we add? Well, there's actually 21 different panels that are available to us. They're all displayed inside the window menu. Now, the ones that are checked are currently visible. Audio meters are visible to the right of the timeline. Media browser is the one that's got those little thumbnails in it. Source monitor and program monitor displayed at the top. And the Tools window is this floating palette right here with timeline, trimming, and editing tools. What I'm missing is a really nice timecode window. But notice here, when I click the word timecode, it gives me this really big floating timecode window. And if I had a second computer monitor attached, I could drag it over to that second monitor, except in this case I don't have one. So I'd like to include it as part of the interface. This is the reason that I left the source window empty, because it's really easy to show. If I grab the timecode, notice that the different edges of the window highlight. If I drag it to the center of the window, this tab will appear with all the others up here. If I drag it into the upper wedge, the window will appear above the other window. If I grab this and drag it so the lower wedge highlights, it appears below that window. If I grab it and drag it so the left wedge highlights, it goes to the left of that window. And if I grab it and drag it so the right wedge highlights, it goes to the right of the window. Most of the time, you're probably going to want to dock it as part of another set of tabs. Dragging it to the center is the appropriate choice. By the way, notice that things have gotten just woefully out of hand here. If you want to change the spacing between panels, just grab a vertical line and drag, and you can drag stuff back out again. Drag a horizontal line. Notice how the cursor changes to a double-headed arrow. Drag up and down to change the height of that particular window. If you want to close a window so that it's gone, let's just drag this over here. 
we've got a couple of options. We can click the, the X next to the window. Let's just drag this wider to make it easier. See that little X right there? When you click it, that window's closed. Go back to the source window. Or if you want to simply reset everything back to square one, go back up to the window menu, go down to workspace, and say reset current workspace. And it says, you sure you want to do that? I say yes, and poof, everything goes back to where it was. All right, let's do one more thing. I do want to create a custom workspace. So we'll take this, say time code. I want to put it below the timeline, make it smaller, grab the line, drag it down. And I want to change the VU meters and drag them so that I've got the time code on the left and the VU meters are horizontal on the right. Drag this up just a little bit. So now I've got my timeline, I've got my time code, I've got my audio meters, my project pane, my media browser. I'm ready to start editing. In fact, I love this so much, I want to save it for the future. Go back to Window, Workspace. And we're going to create a new workspace. We're going to call it Larry's Editing Workspace. And click OK. And that's it. We want to switch between workspaces. There's mine. There's editing, except it's got all my customization in it. So let's go reset the editing. Say yes. And now I can toggle between my customized workspace and the editing workspace and select the one that works the best for me. <laughs> we'll be playing a lot with workspaces and moving tabs around and trying to find the most efficient way of dealing with all of our media and the panels that we have to deal with throughout the rest of this training. For now, what I'd suggest you do is work with the 2-Up display. Don't get too carried away customizing until you get more comfortable working with the program and then <laughs> customize to your heart's content. The more I use workspaces, the more I like them. The ability to modify the editing environment to suit a particular project or purpose is especially helpful. I also like the ability to easily add, change, and remove tabs, which are called panels as necessary. Thanks for watching.